Right, so, um, I, as you can probably tell, I'm literally still in the process of writing an introduction to this session. Um, so, I heard a phrase in the morning session, which was, archaeology is a process of putting fragments together. Thank you. Um, and I'm using your fragments, um, heart-formed thoughts and feelings and ideas that are messy and raw. This session came about from a presentation that Penny and I attended about a year ago. And it was built as a manifesto on the topic of women's power. And we came away with a feeling of unease and discomfort because it felt like in a conversation about women in power, we hadn't really seen a kind of an intersectional interrogation of what power might mean and the implications of that. And also a kind of sense of discomfort that we'd sat and we'd talked and come out and nothing could really change. And I'm coming here to say, we're feeling with discomfort, um, feeling that why am I here standing in this room and people who are doing amazing work and not being sure I'm the right person to do that. I'm coming here with the feeling of anger that we've had these conversations and nothing has changed and things are not changing fast enough. But archaeology is about bringing fragments together. And what I hope we can do today is bring together a lot of voices and really actually see something happen. So I actually have to tend to see me now. Who are going to talk in a much more controlled and prepared way? I don't know about that, but um, thank you, thank you, Beth, um, and thank you everyone for being here today. Um, to follow on really from kind of that introduction where we started, um, I would share her view that um, we spent a while thinking, what, what are we doing here? Is this for us? Is this this isn't our research? We don't look into kind of gender issues in archaeology, but um, we're a bit mad and kind of want to do something about it. And I'm really grateful for everyone kind of um, joining us. And um, well, I guess it's us joining you really. So. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about this. I thought before we kicked off, um, I would throw up some um, figures of the picture of archaeology in the UK. I know that this might be potentially relatively um, well trodden ground. And I, I think in a session this morning, there are a number of um, figures on um, um, diversity in commercial archaeology. Um, but I think um, I'm not going to go through them all, but just in the background, I'm sorry, it's a horrible slide, a lot of text, but I um, wanted to put these up just to um, emphasise some of the structural issues. I think what they don't show um, are some of the kind of hidden stories or personal stories for some things. We don't have statistics because they're not collected, um, but here is a start. And I really wanted to emphasise what Beth was saying about the um, intersections being, I think, where some of um, the issues that we like to talk about and kind of improve action on, where they're really um, kind of exacerbated and come to the fore. Um, so, yeah, so I guess the discussion today, what we want to get out of it really is move on from the discussion and move towards action and change. Um, I know there's been uh, lots of or several um, um, kind of documents of guidance and um, um, yeah, there's lots going on and we want to really um, uh, redouble efforts I suppose to build on that and come up with something, be that a, um, I'm not going to dictate the output, be that um, an article, a publication or just kind of a handful of points that we can all sign up to and think yes actually we can all get behind this and do something different in the future. Mm -hmm. um, I just before I hand over to Cecilia for her words of introduction, I'd like to say if we were if we were physicists thinking about power, apparently, and I didn't know this before this morning, but power is in physics requires change in a system and the specified time for that change to occur. And I think that time has come. So looking forward to today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Penny, I, I'll go a little bit more into into figures because um, as uh, non, uh, um, I don't have a permanent contract, and uh, this seems to be quite uh, uh, an important element of power in academy. And uh, uh, I've been um, running around uh, half Europe in the last few day, uh, years, and uh, I, I wanted to have a look at what happened, for instance, in <coughs> Germany, the place I uh, leave more or less Italy, the place where I come from, and Spain, where my institution is. And what we'll see is that the figures are surprisingly similar 
in this part, so how the percentage of female professors are identified as female uh, in Germany. Here we have uh, around uh, the, the maximum level is around 20%. Uh, in uh, was to, uh, 2017. Uh, this is Italy, and Italy is um, my uh, yes, the place I come from, but also it's even worse because we know that uh, in two, two years ago, the 27% of women had a career or a superior education against uh, the 17% of men. But let's look at the highest level here, and again. It's the 20% of female full professorships. And uh, uh, this is uh, the data from my own institution, the SIC. So here, uh, I think we see a very nice data. I think that the feminism, the feminist movement in Spain is powerful, is strong, and we have a more optimistic figure. We have 25%. <coughs> of uh, professors that are full professors, but of course, just after the, uh, the PhD, where the figures are similar, it starts to change everywhere. So, um, <laughs> what I feel when I, I look at this data, and, uh, what, and it, this is what I felt, the same sensation that I felt when uh, Penny and Beth came into the room and started to talk about their experience at the talk by um, that was participated is rage, honestly rage or anger. And uh, um, the question here we asked ourselves when we wanted to do something is, is anger enough? Uh, can we speak about um, women being women in archaeology or identify ourselves as female archaeologists, is that enough to talk about it? Um, I think that in this book that came out last year, I found a partial answer. At least I found out that anger is fine for women. Because in this <coughs> book, the author demonstrates how we also uh, are supposed to feel bad about feeling angry. And uh, so now to um, um, make an ex a, a great example of how feeling angry things can be um, like put into a change perspective, I'm very pleased to introduce the, um, the film and the author of the idea and protagonist of this film with Sara Cava, uh, Dr. Blanco Rotea from Spain, um, came here today to present her film about uh, being uh, a woman in a male collective talking about conflict, archaeology and war.